Hey guys, today we're gonna to learn how to record audio or an instrument into Ableton Live. And we're gonna need a couple of things in order to get that started. So obviously you'll need to have your computer set up with Ableton Live installed to it. Um, you can use um, the demo version of Ableton to do this, um, or I believe even Ableton Lite you can record into. So that's your computer, but then you'll need an instrument or a microphone. So uh, you can use some USB microphones. Uh, I'm using a more traditional type of microphone that uses an XLR connection. So if you've got a USB microphone, you can plug it in and then you can install the drivers for it and you can start using it straight away. But for a guitar, for example, you've got a connection like this and your computer's not going to have that type of connection. And if you're using a microphone that uses an XLR connection like this, then again, your computer's not gonna have that. So if you're using these types of connections, you're gonna need an audio interface. Okay, so this is an interface. It'll plug into your computer by USB or Thunderbolt or whatever connection. You just need to make sure that you get one with the correct connection for your computer. In my case, I'm using USB. And it has a guitar input here. So this is what's called a, a TRS or a quarter inch connection. Um, and then it's also got a mic um, input here, which in this case is an XLR connection, which is a typical microphone cable. So we're gonna go ahead and plug the uh, interface into the laptop. We'll show you how to set up the interface properly as well. That'll just take a couple seconds. And then we'll record something in. So let's do it. Okay, so I've got my instrument here. I got my interface with the instrument plugged in um, and then I've got um, Ableton over here and what we're looking at inside of Ableton is the preferences and to access the preferences you go control and comma and here we're looking at driver type now if you're using a Mac computer you'll select core audio here. You'll go driver type, you'll go core audio. If you're using a Windows, there's a couple of ways to go about it and I'm unfortunately not using the best way to do it. So I've got MME slash DirectX and then for my input device, so for things going into the computer, I've got my Steinberg UR12 selected, which is this device here. Uh, if you have, um, if you look at audio output device, that's your speakers, right? And then that should be similar on the Mac. On the Mac, you'll have your input device being um, your interface. And then if your interface is actually connected up to your speakers um, and sending audio out to your speakers, then you have that selected as well, right? Um, so input, Steinberg, and then if your output, like I said, connected to speakers, it goes there. Um, now for... Um, Windows computers, you can download an ACO driver for your um, Windows uh, or your interface, sorry. Now, you can see down here it says Yamaha Steinberg, which is what I've got here, but for whatever reason, it's not opening for me when I select it. We're just going to lay that to rest, but you would have something like this selected, and then the options for the inputs and outputs would be available to you and you'd set it up the same. It just means that ACO is better. Um, it's got less latency and it works a bit better than what I'm doing here, but for the purpose of the video, it doesn't matter. So we've got input there. We just need to make sure that that's set up properly and then we can close it. All right, so then the next thing is because we're recording an instrument or a piece of sound, we're recording onto an audio channel. We're not recording MIDI. So we can delete MIDI one MIDI 2, and I'm going to delete audio um, number 2 as well, and I'm just going to use audio 1. Now, this is where we're looking for when we're recording in sound. We're looking at external inputs, right? And in this case, you can see I've got 1 or 2, which would be a stereo input, right? So, one channel being the left speaker, one channel being the right speaker. Or I've got just one, or I've got just two. And in this case, the mic is one, the guitar is two. And you can tell this by if I strum the guitar, you'll notice that the little green indicator is showing up here, right? So we've got audio coming in. So we're gonna select that, okay? Now, but if I strum, you'll notice that whilst this is green, 
there's no audio actually coming into the channel here. This fader here is, is not showing anything. So I need to select input, right? And then all of a sudden you can see that come up. If I mute the guitar, you don't hear it. I'm going to strum. Right, I don't play guitar. I'm just using this as an example. So um, the audio is coming in, right? So now we need to make sure that the volume of the input signal is loud enough or not too loud. So in this case, what we're going to look for is when we're strumming the instrument, we don't want it to be coming up here and going red but we don't want it to be all the way down here. And I can show you that. So the way that I can regulate the volume of the incoming signal is here with input to gain. So if I turn, so at the moment you can see it's at halfway. If I turn this to a quarter of the way and then strum the guitar, the signal coming in is quieter. If I turn it up even higher to like 75%, the signal is very loud, right? So if I put it somewhere around 65 in my case, maybe even a little bit lower, about 60%, that sort of incoming signal is more appropriate, right? So when we play really hard, we don't redline and clip. And when we play really soft, it's audible, right? So this is what's called gain staging. So it's setting the gain as it stages into the, uh, into the program. Um, so gain, gain staging is important to understand. And if you search my channel, you can see more information on gain staging. So we've got it coming in. Next, what we need to do in order to record, um, we should set the tempo in Ableton at the speed that we will be playing at. So let's just say 120, right? right? And then we need to go ahead and arm the clip for record. So that we say that we want this channel to be where the audio coming in goes. So that one is ready to record. And then finally we press record up the top and we strum and we see that the audio is coming in very clearly here. Right, so um, I press stop there. If I wanted to record from the beginning, I press stop twice, right? I get the playhead back to one one right at the beginning and then I can record from the beginning. Right? So I can go there. If I want a metronome so I can um, be in time, the metronome is here. Um, and if I want a little bit of time um, to play in, I can go two bar count in. So I just did that by dropping it down, two bar count in. I'm going to click on the audio and delete it that I made there. I'm going to go ahead and press record and we're getting the two bar count in. Two, three, four, one, two, three. Right, so that um, is how you'd record it in and use a metronome to plan time and give yourself a bit of a count in um, so that you can get ready. And what else do I need to mention to you that would be useful right now? I think that that's covered everything. Now, once you've finished recording, I would set this back to auto. So this listens just to the incoming signal. This is just automatically trying to figure out whether there's something coming in or not. It's not that intuitive. And then off means it's not going to listen at all, right? So you either want it on auto or off, but you don't want it on in when you're actually going to start playing it back and moving it around because you notice that the clips deactivate there and they're not um, so friendly. So that's how you record an instrument. Let's just quickly take a look at the microphone as well. So I'll jump over to the mic and we'll do that. Okay, so let's connect the XLR cable to the microphone. Like so, and then connect that to the interface. Put it in the right way around. Cool, so my microphone's in, um, and I'm gonna select the correct input, and I'm gonna tap the microphone to see whether it's working. But you'll notice that this is not lighting up, right? So what's wrong? So with microphones, some of them will require what they call for, uh, phantom power, which is 48 volts of power, right? 
um, that needs to be supplied. And you'll see that indicator here, um, 48 volts, right? So I need to turn that on and I turn it on on the back of this one. So I turn on the phantom power and then we hope that it works this time. So I'll pop, pop that, that down, down and, and you can, can see, see now I've got, got an incoming, incoming signal. signal. So I'll select that. that. All right. right. Yeah, yeah, I, I can, can hear myself. myself. Um, I'll just mute that channel so that I don't hear it. All right. Um, and then same sort of thing. I just put my cursor where I want to start recording. I press record here. It's going to give me the count in. And then I go, sup people. This was a video on how to record some audio. If you would like to then learn how to chop the audio up and arrange it, look at my channel for audio uh, clip manipulation and that sort of thing. Just go Collective Intelligence Audio Manipulation. Videos will come up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys very soon in another one.